speaking about how men can actually raise their woman's satisfaction, understand how to please her, how to pleasure her, how to, you know, give her full, you know, ejaculation or satisfaction. Let me ask you, why did you write the book, Kuyaza? I really have been yearning to know the, you know, the reason why you wrote the book, Kuyaza. So, um, one of my books on African and Arab erotology, which is basically about um, the study of sex and um, sexuality from an African perspective, that was my work, the fourth book, I believe. Um, when that came out, um, one of the readers of that particular book um, asked, sent me an email and asked me why didn't I mention Kunyaza in my book, because this was a book about, like I said, Arab um, and African erotology. And at that time, I'd never heard of Kunyaza. So I did what most people do. I Googled it. So Googled Kinyaza. And I came across this wonderful, pleasure oriented sex positive technique that is enriched in African culture, which is preserved by women, founded by women, and mainly taught by women, that is teaching men the importance of pleasure in their partner. And it has this reputation for helping women experience orgasms and squirts and female ejaculation. And again, I'd never heard about that. And funny enough, it was on the 8th of August, which is um, International Female Orgasm Day. So yeah. I then went about um, contacting a few people from Uganda, Rwanda that I know personally. And they told me their stories about the, this secret tradition. And then I came across um, a director who was at the time doing a, um, a GoFundMe campaign for what would be the documentary called Sacred Water. So I reached out to Olivier Jordan and he told me about his research and he, he, he put me in contact with a couple of people that he filmed in his documentary. And for me, what I wanted to do, this was about 2016, 16, I believe, I wanted to preserve because again, although I'm not from Rwanda, I'm from Nigeria, I, I, one of the things that this does disappoint me is that we don't hear many of the stories and contributions of oh, black so and African good. people to sex and sexuality, whether it's sex educators, our mm. sexual practices, our sexual techniques, our culture. We don't really hear about it. And I think whilst we, whilst we hear a lot about ancient India with the Kama Sutra, with I'm yoga, exactly. with, with, with um, the Ovid tradition with um, in ancient Taoism, we hear even about Europeans with the Romance tradition, Latin America. I recently heard of, about um, the Japanese Chibari, you know, yeah. um, is, is, a, is a form of um, sexual. Let's, let's not deviate, but you know, you see cultures have their own sexual, you know, ritual, the, you know, like the Kachabali as well for exactly. the Rwanda and all of that. I, I truly, like you said, I don't think we have any of Nigerian ritual that I know of, you know, that talks about real female pleasure. The, the thing is, what we, we do have our own culture, but a lot of our culture is preserved orally. And it's passed on from generation to generation by mm -hmm. people, to elders communicating to um, the, um, the senior, the junior people in the, in the community. But because a lot of these traditions and practices are not documented in the form of like a book or a documentary, it gets lost. And that's why people yeah. feel as if, you know, as if Africans, we haven't contributed anything to what, which we, we have contributed. We have many traditions. So that's why for me, I was like, okay, this would be a really good idea to maybe, and I didn't find a book about it in English. There was a book in German and French, and I reached out to the um, author. We communicated briefly um, via Google Translate, but I was like, okay, he said he wasn't planning to translate his book to English, and I thought, okay, it'd be very good to maybe kind of, because I wanted to pay homage to the Kunyaza tradition, and again, just to show that this is something, a positive tradition, which not only is practiced in Rwanda, but is practiced in different parts of Africa, in Nigeria now as well, um, South Africa, and even in, in parts of South America. So that, that, that was really the impetus for me writing the book, and I wanted to amplify the, vo the voices of um, black people, especially um, African women as well, who have, like I mentioned before, they founded this tradition, preserved it, and they're the ones that's primarily tr um, teaching it, but I'm just using it my book is a vessel to kind of try and propagate um, and amplify um, these voices. Amazing, beautiful, amazing. This is, this is, I mean, the only reason I wanted